This is our second video related to the .NET internal subject, Object Pinning. In the first one, we have theoretically explained about the subject, what is pinning and why object pinning is being required on certain situations. We have also explained the GC behavior on pinned objects. In this section, we will practically show using a Windows debugging program how the GC behaves on a pinned object. Before going to the demo, let's have few more insights related to the subject. The most important one is GC handle structure. This structure is a handle to hold the manager object when it is passed to the unmanaged world. So once garbage collector finds a handle has been allocated on the manager object, then it will not pick the manager object for deletion or moving to the another heap. Actually, there are four different ways to create this particular handle. Normal, pinned, weak, weak track resurrection. For us, for this scope, we will only discuss normal and pinned GC handles. Now, let's see what is the difference between these two types of pinned handle creations. The first one is pinned. We are familiar right now that if an object is been bound with a pinned handle, then it will stay at the fixed memory location. GC can neither move or delete the object until the programmer unpin or free the object. But if the object is pinned normally, then GC can move the normal pinned object to the next heap, but it cannot delete it. Let's do this in a demo and prove these particular theories. Observe this code block. We have a dog object created and a cat. Dog cannot move to the neighborhood, so it is been tied with a pinned handle. At the same time, cat is allowed to go to the neighborhood, so it is only pinned with a normal handle. Let's see in a WinDBG session how these objects are behaving. I am opening my test application. I have a sample to prove the pinning objects. By applying this button, this code block will be executed. A dog and cat object will be created. Cat object is bound by a normal pin and a dog is attached with a pinned handle. Applying the button. Objects created. Now, let's go to the debugger and see how these objects are bounded and where they are existing in the memory. I am opening a 32-bit debugger because this is a 32-bit process. Attaching the process for live debugging. If you have got a dump from our blog, you can open the dump, but here I am attaching the process. Selecting my application. Now the application is being attached to the debugger. The first thing I am loading a DLL. SOS DLL will contain the .NET debugging commands. So this is the first step to do. DLL has been loaded. Now we wanted to see the dog and cat object from the memory. So get them from the memory by applying dump heap command. Dump heap minus type cat. This command will print all the cat object which is available on the heap. I have only one cat object. So the cat object address has been printed. Let's see where this object resides. We are almost sure that this is in gen 0 heap, right? But verify that. GC where address. This command we have explained in our previous discussions. So I am applying it straightforward. This will print in which generational heap this address resides. It is in gen 0. So cat object is in gen 0. Let's also verify the dog object. For that, I have to get the dog object. Dog. This is the address of dog object. I'm copying this address. Same command, gc where It is also in the generation 0. So both objects are in the generation 0. Now let's see how this object is been rooted. I am taking the dog object 
and applying a command gc root in our previous example we have shown this command this command will print the reference chain but here we will see how this is being rooted with what handle you can see that it is a pinned handle so dog object is been bound by a pinned handle right we know that cat object is been bound by a normal handle so let also see that cat copying the address of the cat applying gc root gc root on cat it is a normal i mean strong handle but it's a normal handle it's not a pinned handle right so we have verified here both cat and dog object resides in generation 0 and dog object is been bound by a pinned handle and cat object by a normal handle now let's consider a gc affected on this gen 0 heap let's see what will happen to this object for that let's go to the application i am applying a gc Normally this kind of thing GC collection you should not do in the application but for the demo purpose I am forcing a GC to show that after effects of GC. So a GC has been happened. Now let's see what happened to this object. For that again we have to go to the debugger, debug break. So we have got the control back to a debugger. Now let's print this object again. dumb heap minus type cat let's see where this cat object resides after the gc gc where now the cat object is gen 1 right this is the one because it is bound by a normal pin normal pin means then gc cannot catch the object with the normal pin but GC can move the object to the next heap. This we have proved. But now our important thing, the cat is being tied with a pinned handle, right? So let's see whether where it is residing. We'll take the dog, take its memory. Sorry. GC where cat obj uh, dog object dog object stays in the gen 0 so before gc both objects were in the gen 0 after the gc the pinned object is still staying in the gen 0 with the same address but cat object has moved to gen 1 this is what we have explained in our discussion if an object is been pinned then the object stay at the fixed memory gc can neither move or delete the object until we unpin the object and if it is a normal pin gc can move the normal object but it cannot delete it so we have proved this particular theory using a windbg session in the next session we will come up with a more windows internal i mean dot net internal subject we also request you to subscribe to our videos for examples you can obtain these examples at our blog thanks